Good evening. Matt and I are so happy to welcome you all to Moods and Memories. Now, why this title? Well, each of the pieces that we're about to play is one that I feel a deeply personal connection to for one reason or another. This past year has been challenging for all of us, to say the least, full of uncertainty, stress, loss of some kind. And music has always been a way for me to try to make sense of senseless times or to give voice to what's inside when words aren't enough. It is in this spirit that I'm very excited to share this music with all of you tonight. Now a quick introduction to the first piece. Sarah Feigen was a Jewish composer born in 1928 in Dvinsk, Latvia. During World War II, she evacuated to Uzbekistan with her mother and siblings, where they lived from 1941 to 1945. After the war, she returned home to continue her formal music education at the Riga Conservatory of Music. Despite being rejected from the program twice due to her religious affiliation, she eventually earned both her bachelor's and master's degrees. In 1972, she and her family moved to Israel, where she founded the Music Conservatory in Cholon and lived for the rest of her life. Her music draws on traditional harmonies and was largely inspired by folk music, which is very apparent in the Fantasia. The experiences of different people around the world. She was able to express her profound emotional responses to human atrocities and natural disasters through both her performance and composition. Many of her works were dedicated to these kinds of events or written in their wakes. She passed away in 2011 and is still known and remembered as a charismatic and innovative musician, performer, teacher, composer, and advocate for musicians of all ages.
Germain Taifer was born in 1892 in Paris and is known as the only female member of Les Six, a group of six French composers, including Darius Millot, Francis Poulenc, Arthur Honegger, Georges Auric, and Louis Doré, who worked together and rose in fame during the 1920s. She began studying at the Paris Conservatory at the age of 12, winning several prizes as both a pianist and composer. In 1917, influential French composer Eric Satie heard Taifer's piece, Jeu de plein air, for two pianos and proclaimed her as his musical daughter. Unfortunately, despite a very promising start to her career, personal circumstances prevented Taifer from achieving the same level of acclaim as the other members of Les Six. She was married twice, both times to men who had become abusive and jealous and who actively discouraged her from composing. She faded for a time from the public view and rarely promoted herself or her works. After World War II, however, Taifer and her second husband separated and she began to compose seriously again. She wrote a substantial amount of chamber music, including works for piano, clarinet, violin, and harp, as well as music for operas, orchestras, wind ensembles, and even films, television, and radio. The arabesque for clarinet and piano was written when she was 81 years old, and she continued to compose and teach until the age of 90.
Matthew Quayle is an American composer who also happens to be my husband. He started writing the sonatine as a gift for our first anniversary, and it quickly became one of my favorite pieces to play. About the sonatine, Matt writes, French and American composers of the early and mid 20th century had a lot in common. After all, many young American composers traveled to France for their studies, or even lived there for years as expats, and many French composers were enthusiastic about the jazz and popular song being created in the United States. Many concert pieces from this time are infused with some neoclassicism, some jazz, a hint of musical impressionism, and the influence of Stravinsky and Prokofiev, two Russian composers who also spent years in France. Numerous clarinet pieces have been written with these broad stylistic characteristics. Sonatine is my affectionate tip of the hat to this type of clarinet piece. The first movement was written in 2009, but then I put the piece aside for a while. I wrote the other two movements in September 2012, making this the first composition I completed after moving to Abu Dhabi.
pause for solo bass clarinet is written by David Bennett Thomas, an American composer who writes and teaches in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The dedication on the piece reads, for Carla and Mark, in memory of Dimitri and Pierre. Pause was written in 2011 for a musician whose home was destroyed in the London riots. Her two cats were also lost in this fire, hence the title of the piece. In the words of the composer, the word pause can also have the meaning to pause and reflect on the loss. The sense of loss in the music is clear, at times turned inward and at others climbing to a whale almost as if it is too much to bear. So before we go on to the bass clarinet piece, we will play the second and third movement of the sonatine.
Pause for solo bass clarinet is written by David Bennett Thomas, an American composer who writes and teaches in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The dedication on the piece reads, for Carla and Mark, in memory of Dimitri and Pierre. Pause was written in 2011 for a musician whose home was destroyed in the London riots. Her two cats were also lost in this fire, hence the title of the piece. In the words of the composer, the word pause can also have the meaning to pause and reflect on the loss. The sense of loss in the music is clear, at times turned inward and at others climbing to a wail, almost as if it is too much to bear. Mm -hmm.
And now for something completely different. Here is Tarantula by Michael Markowski. Markowski is currently based in Brooklyn, New York, and has written extensively for wind ensembles and chamber groups, as well as film, animation, and commercial music. I'll read the composer's own program note for Tarantula. He says, what better instrument to write a piece called Tarantula for than for the fuzzy, dark, and biting tones of a bass clarinet? Tarantula, as you might have guessed, was inspired in part by the Italian Tarantella style, a wild and off-kilter folk dance believed to help treat tarantism caused by the bite of a highly poisonous wolf spider. While traditional tarantellas are often written in 6-8 time, I wanted to stretch the use of compound time even further by juggling 7-8, 5-8, and other mixed meters to heighten the sense of hysteria. An eight-legged octatonic mode also crawls through the piece, inducing a kind of harmonic delirium while twitchy grace note figures exaggerate the madness and mystery that holds us hostage. Tarantula was written especially for clarinetist David Gould and premiered in 2019. Enjoy. Thank you. 
Béla Kovács is a Hungarian clarinetist and composer who's a master of many genres in his playing and composition. He wrote this piece, Shola Malehem Ro Feidman, for Giora Feidman, who's sometimes referred to as the King of Klezmer. He's been playing this music for over half a century and is one of the most beloved and renowned play. Klezmer music, to put it very generally, is a centuries-old style of folk music that draws on the traditions of Ashkenazi Judaism in the villages of Eastern Europe. It was brought to the United States of America by Yiddish-speaking immigrants during the great migrations of the late 19th and early 20th centuries and has experienced a revival over the last several decades. Sholem Aleichem, meaning peace be with you, is a traditional Hebrew salutation and blessing and rov is an honorific for master or teacher, referring, of course, to Feidman's stature. This piece has been described as nothing less than an inspired concert tribute to the amazing tradition of the klezmer clarinet. The piece begins with a section reminiscent of the duina. Traditionally, the duina would be a slow, freely improvised section used to attract the attention of the audience so they could more fully enjoy the, the faster and more danceable sections that follow. While this opening is written out, it has an improvisatory feel, and then it moves through ever faster sections all the way to the almost dizzyingly joyful ending. Before we go to this final piece, I'd like to take one final opportunity to thank you all for joining us tonight, to end with a quote from Giora Feidman himself. I pick up the clarinet to share a message with mankind. I do not go on stage to show that I can play an instrument. I go on stage to speak music and to let people share my inner voice. So peace be with all of you, and here's looking ahead to a year of renewed hope and optimism. Thank you.